Hollywood. This huge industry providing masterpieces. But also, let's be honest, terrible movies. They have been making or breaking trends for decades. This scene is from the movie Exodus Gods and Kings. It looks great, obviously. The budget is there. It looks magnificent. But there is a huge lie that can be seen all over the movie. A lie that is present in the majority of movies about Kemet, and I am not even talking about skin color. That lie has spread so much that today, most people integrated it to the aesthetic of Kemet. People don't know that it is a pure invention. That's why today, we will discuss the myths perpetuated by Hollywood movies about ancient Egypt. So bear with me till the end of this video, because the last one will blow your mind. In many movies about ancient Egypt, we see scenes like these. Do you see the problem? I am talking about helmets. After watching movies, I have noticed that many of these directors add helmets in the equipments and outfits of the Kemites. And many people actually think that it exists in the Kemet. But Kemites at war rarely covered their heads, the pharaohs being the exception. There were people wearing helmets in Kemet. Usually it was the mercenaries, groups of foreigners who had them from their own traditions. So, those who came from Europe like the Sherdin or Philistines, or Asiatics who also wore helmets. The Sherdin helmets were particularly interesting, with a pair of horns protruding from the helmet on either side of a disc. On the other hand, Nubians just like Kemites are never shown helmeted. Obviously, it was not part of Africans' culture. Another evidence of the connections between Nubians and Kemites. The pharaoh is often shown wearing the war helmet, otherwise known as the blue crown. This crown was made of cloth or leather, but covered with discs. If you want to learn more about it, check the following video. Now, let's move to the next fact. Jews and slaves built the pyramids. This myth, perpetuated by depictions of Egyptian slave work in popular culture, traces back to Greek historian Herodotus, sometimes called the father of history. However, it may actually be based on a misreading of his work. Herodotus mentioned about 100,000 Egyptians being compelled into work, but he only explicitly mentions these workers building a road, not the pyramids themselves. Contemporary experts disagree even if he meant for his audience to infer that those same workers were forced into labor on the pyramids. In 2003, Egyptologist Mark Lehner spoke about his decades of research in Giza, finding that most archaeological clues point to a working class of Egyptians who tackled the pyramids much like a construction crew under the watch of a foreman. Lehner uncovered a large quantity of cattle bones from young animals, indicating a diet rich in what we would essentially call prime beef today. Moreover, a sense of camaraderie among the workers is evident. Harvard researcher George Reisner found Egyptian graffiti that labeled teams such as Friends of Khufu or Drunkards of Minkor, suggesting that these workers knew how to unwind after a long day. When these builders died, they were buried with their belongings close to the pyramids occupied by the pharaohs, a kind of hallowed ground that an enslaved person probably would not have been allowed to occupy. While the work was undoubtedly grueling, it is unlikely that it constituted slavery. Dr. Lehner suggests that ancient Egyptians subscribed to a strong sense of civic duty, akin to the Amish of today. Egyptians of that era might have volunteered to work on the pyramids, believing they were contributing to the greater good. Some Egyptians may have also been working off debt, known as Bach, to a higher-ranking Egyptian. Again, not quite slavery, since even lords themselves owed Bach to other lords. The exact methods used in pyramid construction remain uncertain, but historians believe that stones were likely mined from nearby quarries and transported across the Nile River for easier access. Once at the construction site, ramps and a rope and pulley system were probably used to maneuver the stones into place. For this next misconception, I need you to watch the following scenes. This is from the movie, The Ten Commandments. This one is from Exodus Gods and Kings. And this is from Land of the Pharaohs. Do you see the issue? If you see it, write it in the comment below. 
Let's see if you can spot it. Okay, let me give you a hint. The issue is related to this headgear. It's called the names. Do you understand what's wrong with it? Well, the problem isn't the crown itself, but the fact that it is worn by almost everyone here. The king, but also random individuals, guards, soldiers, etc. It makes it look like it was a regular headgear available to everyone. When talking about ancient Egypt, people usually imagine a group of people with these gears. But the issue is that it was not the case. The Nemes was a crown, which means that only the rulers could wear it. So, seeing it worn by all these people in movies isn't accurate. That's one of the greatest misconceptions people have about Kemet. By the way, let me know in the comments if you knew that fact or if you thought that it was a regular gear worn by all ancient Egyptians. Let's delve into an issue I've touched upon repeatedly in my videos, one that is vividly present in all the images and videos before you. Have you noticed the issue? Examine closely the painted scenes adorning the walls, then contrast them with how people are portrayed. Yes, it's about skin color. I've discussed this extensively on my channel, but now I want to introduce you to this topic from a fresh perspective. As we delve into movies, a pattern emerges, the cast is always white. What makes matters worse is that these actors often lack any connection to Africa, both culturally and ancestrally. I am not questioning their acting prowess, they are great actors, don't get me wrong. I genuinely appreciate their craft. However, it's essential to note that their physical attributes don't align with the characters they portray, who originated and thrived in tropical settings. Anyway, let's assume that it is factual, that ancient Egyptians really looked like that. This means that there must be something that led people to believe that the Kemites were pale-skinned, right? Maybe there is some art somewhere of pale-skinned Kemites. I looked and found all these pieces. People tend to use them as evidence. And that's true. There are many statues of ancient Egyptians that are entirely white. But here is the issue. That's not their original state. This issue actually concerns all the art of antiquity, especially in ancient Greece and Rome. Their statues were originally painted, but they have been whitewashed later. But let's go back to our topic. Let's take this statue for example. It's clearly white, right? But when we zoom in, here's what we see. Do you notice these traces of dark brown pigments? These are traces of its original hue. This statue wasn't originally white. It lost its color with time. Here are other examples. You can see the same issue. So, basically, the Kemites never depicted themselves white-skinned. While doing my research, I randomly stumbled upon this video of Chaki and Tadio. Vous parliez de noir charbon, de couleur de solex. Voilà la couleur solex. Oui. Mais c'est la couleur solex qui dominait la terre à cette époque-là. Et vous ne verrez jamais un blanc représenté, même avec les traits, de, 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 si vous voulez, d'un chef ou d'un dignitaire à cette époque. Précisément parce qu'ils étaient au bas de l'échelle, tout simplement. De même que dans l'histoire de l'Europe impériale, vous ne verrez jamais un trou noir représenté avec les traits d'un chef parce que, entre temps, la situation politique et sociale s'était renversée. As he said, back in the day, the rulers were the black people. Those who were not black were part of the lower classes. This means that none of these movies are factual, they completely inverted the logic. Keep in mind that I am not promoting any racist or black supremacist propaganda, I am just sharing the facts. That's just how things were back in the day. If you have doubts, I highly advise you to watch the following video. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. So, bear with me till the end of this video if you want to understand the depth of this manipulation. We are all familiar with these images of pharaohs riding horses or using them on war chariots, but have you noticed that we've never seen any image of a pharaoh on a camel? Yet, camels are today associated with Kemet and its pyramids. Probably because of movies like the following. So, were they camels in ancient Egypt? Well, the truth is that the association of camels with the ancient Egyptian culture is a modern creation. 
Although they were known to the Kemites from prehistoric times, they were not a part of their daily lives. Camels are not African in origin, they came from Asia and were domesticated around Arabia. They don't appear in Kemet's writing system nor Pantheon, which are almost exclusively made of animals today living in sub-Saharan Africa. The use of camels was introduced by foreigners from Asia who invaded North Africa and brought these animals with them as attested on numerous artworks. They appeared around the 5th century and provided the means for crossing the desert and reach sub-Saharan Africa to Asiatics. The Kemites used horses and relied on mules and donkeys as their beasts of burden to cross the desert and reach other regions within Africa. Egyptian Tombs It's difficult to talk about Kemet without mentioning them. Films like Raiders of the Lost Ark and video games like Tomb Raider have sparked a fascination with adventurers seeking priceless artifacts in long-abandoned Egyptian pyramids and tombs. The cunning grave robber typically employs a companion to scout ahead, ensuring any potential falling boulders or giant buzzsaws are triggered before they venture further. However, this perception is far from the historical truth. In reality, Egyptian tombs were not booby-trapped as often depicted in popular media. Instead, they were safeguarded with large, nearly immovable stones that slid into place, securely blocking the entrances. If anyone did rob a tomb, it was usually one of the builders who possessed intimate knowledge of the layout, making navigation relatively trouble-free. The idea of elaborate traps becomes questionable when considering that builders would not jeopardize their access to valuable belongings within the tomb. In cases where someone might have been crushed by a giant rock, it was most likely an unfortunate mishap related to grave robbing rather than an intentionally set booby trap. Among the things that have a main spot in movies about ancient Egypt, there are wigs. We see them everywhere. And to be honest, to me it looks weird sometimes. It looks like putting African people's hair on Europeans. Let's take a look at these examples. It is true that ancient Egyptians used wigs. But that theory is not 100% accurate. Not all Kemites used wigs, and they didn't wear them every day. Isn't it strange that an entire population would exclusively use wigs and never their own hair? Many people employ this theory to undermine the possibility of the African origin of the people of Kemet. Whenever they encounter a Kemite with Afro-like hair, they dismiss it as a wig, a claim that is unfounded. Jeffrey Tassi, an archaeologist from the University of Edinburgh, said this. The idea that all ancient Egyptian hairstyles were wigs is unsustainable, given the amount of mummified remains found with intricate hairstyles on the natural hair. He added the following. Both false and the person's natural hair were worn in ancient Egypt, neither to the exclusion of the other. The owning of wigs was usually dependent on class and status. However, the wearing of wigs was determined by the context or occasion. So, no. Not all ancient Egyptians wore wigs. Only a minor part of the population could afford them. So, most of the time what we see is hair, not wigs. Now, let's look at these wigs used in movies. We can see this type, this type, and many other weird stuff. Now, my question is, are these representations accurate? Well, it's way more complex than we think. The first types are quite accurate. The others are complete inventions, as you probably guessed it. But something most people forget is that wigs were inspired by real hairstyles. And these hairstyles can be found in Kemet, but also all over Africa. But there is an issue. It's no coincidence that we consider this specific longer and straighter hair wig or hairstyle to be the main style of the Egyptians. Something is being kept from us, and I'm about to reveal it to you. You know, our perception of Kemet is not a coincidence. Kemet was a complex civilization, but Egyptologists only show us a small part of it. And that part is the one that can make it look like a Middle Eastern or European civilization. For example, when thinking about the ancient Egyptians, we usually see the following visuals. And that's exactly what the mainstream wants us to see. We feel like all Egyptians look like this with longer and straighter hair, right? So, this is an Egyptian and this is a black person or a Nubian, right? But that's a lie. This is an Egyptian and so is this. As well as this. 
And the worst part in this debate is that the last two have even more legitimacy over Kemet than the first one. And that's because they are representative of the population of Upper Kemet, the land of the pharaohs, who had less contact with Asia or Europe. And Kemet, the role of hair and hairstyles in establishing a national identity was done through assimilating traditional Nile Valley hairstyles, such as the short round curly styles, with the longer straighter delta hairstyles. The mainstream decided to select the Delta hairstyles and made it the standard style of all Kemites. The Delta people had regular contacts with foreign groups, which led to some similarities in terms of hairstyles. But why did they do that? Well, the answer is simple. Because the traditional hairstyle of Upper Egypt, the land of the pharaohs, is the classic Afro hairstyle. This is why numerous pharaohs donned Afro wigs, directly influenced by their Afro heritage, a signature hairstyle of black Africans worldwide. These images clearly show that during the early dynasties in Kemet, the vast majority of the people embraced Afro hairstyles. If you still don't understand why it may be problematic for movies, let me explain further. Picture a movie about ancient Egypt. Now imagine most of the cast with afro hairstyles and dark skin instead of the usual memes headgear or long delta hairstyle. Do you understand now? Indeed, such a portrayal might appear unusual and overtly highlight the black African heritage of this civilization. As a result, filmmakers consciously omitted this style from the overall aesthetics of their movies about Kemet, instead emphasizing the long hairstyle, wigs, and memes to obscure Kemet's black identity. The true Kemites were everyday Africans sporting Afro hair, residing bare-chested within a tropical habitat, in essence, indigenous Africans. So, what we see and think about ancient Egypt has been meticulously selected to manipulate our perception of that civilization in order to detach it from its original roots in black Africa. And Hollywood and the industry of video games are still fueling this false perception with their recent creations. That's why our work on this channel is necessary. With our creations, we bring balance. What are your thoughts on this? Do you agree with me, or do you think that there are other reasons behind these choices? Let me know in the comments below. I am always happy to discuss with you over there. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and support the channel. Thanks for watching Mr. Emodup's channel, and see you in the next video.